never a more worthy winner of the Hall of Fame award than Bert Newton. absolutely thrilled with the way in which I've been remembered by people today. It has been three years since I had the news broken to me by Patrice Fidgen from TV Week. <laughs> so I was no longer with the Nine Network, <laughs> then confirmed only last Christmas by Ian Gow. <laughs> I, I have... Is Ian here, by the way? Is Ian Gow here this evening? A warm, wonderful man. Where is he? <laughs> Ian. Lovely. God bless you. Such nice people running television these days. <laughs> Remember the old days when we had creative people? Terrible days. Dreadful. <laughs> this afternoon... <laughs> by the way, of course, Ian... Uh... Only joking. Only joking. The most emotional thing for me today was to walk into the foyer of this hotel and I kid you not, and please as I say, I wish to remain modest, I had no less, I guess, than 150 people surge toward me, which was wonderful. I said to Jason and Carly, who came in with me, uh, <laughs> I want to thank a couple of people. I would like to thank, I'd like to thank Peter, Peter Feynman. There is some sort of talk in the industry that Peter and I have had some sort of blue or whatever. This is not true at all. It's obviously just a case he's lost my phone number. <laughs> I want to thank another gentleman who's in the room tonight. He's a very important part of this award. And I speak of Don Lane. Lovely seeing you, Don. <laughs> Don has always been very kind, very generous and very supportive of me, until recently. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And to paraphrase MacArthur, perhaps one day I shall return. Thank you. <laughs> Winner of the Hall of Fame Award, Bert Newton. I won't top that. I'll see you later on. <laughs> Main reason for being here is I just want to go out on the Sunday night again and uh, <laughs> have a look around. The I've just worked it out. The last time I went out on the Sunday night, it was the Billy Graham crusade in 1961. <laughs> I realise that my wife is in the audience this evening, but I've just been told she's sitting with my producer, Leanne Mercer. Uh, which is good news. You never let your wife and your producer get together, but it's happened tonight. I want to pay tribute to this wonderful woman who's the, the light of my life and the wind beneath my wings. Also, Patty, too, has been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. I accept this with much grace, and I do. <laughs> I'm here actually to present the guy. Thank you for that standing ovation which uh, doesn't happen too often. I suppose you're thinking to yourself, well, it may be the last chance to... <laughs> Thank the old bastard, you know, I don't... Who, who knows? Probably thinking to yourself, well, he's now doing morning television. Surely death is next. <laughs> you know, to see... Uh, to receive that sort of standing ovation, all kidding aside, it does... It does uh, touch my heart. Is that some sort of cue to get off or what? No. That's what I, I was going to mention too. I mean, television really has changed, hasn't it? I mean, it's, it's all promotion now, advertising, getting it out there. I mean, in the old days, what we would simply have... I mean, it's go, go, go. Recall the night that only threw one of those at Don? Wonderful night that night. Wasn't it? <laughs> Speaking. Okay, Paddy, won't be a sec. <laughs> when I. Uh... 
the ovation that you gave me is really the, uh, the icing on the cake, although when I arrived this afternoon here at, uh, at Crown, I mean, I haven't been to the Logies with the exception of accepting Graham's uh, Hall of Fame award a couple of years ago, for many, many years, and I, it surprised me that anyone basically remembered me, but coming into the, the Crown foyer, there were 500 people there shouting and screaming and throwing things. I said to Ricky Martin, who was walking in with me, I said, this is, uh, this is just sensational. It, it amazes me, too, why they would book Ricky and me on the one show. As I get to the, uh, to the, uh, the material's not good, but obviously the grog's flowing, which is good. <laughs> Nothing has changed. You know, when I was doing the Logies all those years ago, it was much more simple. You just arrived on the day, uh, you did a gag on Kamal, uh, <laughs> you insulted an American guest, <laughs> gave the gold to Graham Kennedy, and then spent most of the night avoiding going to bed with Molly Meldrum. But, <laughs> and I suppose some things never change. Can I just say sincerely, it is a pleasure to be here uh, tonight to, uh, to introduce... <laughs> Molly is actually kissing my wife, Patty, over there. A first for both of them. Well, there you go. I meant nothing, I meant nothing by that. I love you, darling. And I'm very fond of you too, Patty. I, I... <laughs> it is terrific to be here uh, again this year. Nice to get the gig again. <clears throat> Love. I love working in the early hours of the morning. It's just, uh, just terrific. <laughs> a lot of people outside the industry might realise that within the industry, the Gold Logie is actually uh, called the John Wood Perpetual Trophy. <laughs> uh, he can't be here this evening. I am one of the few people who knows where he is. Uh, he is watching the, the telecast on the stanchion of the Westgate Bridge. I read that, uh, I, don't jump, John, what have you do, don't jump. He's been nominated eight times for the gold. I know how he feels in the early years of the Logies. I was nominated 11 times, 11 consecutive years, uh, including five years for the best new face. <laughs> John, if you are, if you are watching, I may not, uh, be giving you perhaps the sort of advice you'd like to hear, but do what I did. Eleven years, no win. I eventually slept with the editor of TV Week five gold later. When I have a look at my, my gold logies, I think more of the fact that I had Dulcie Bowling's best years. Kate, I don't know the editor now, but John, make your, your own arrangements. <laughs> I noticed before that Patty again this year was sitting uh, with, uh, with Molly. No chance this year, darling. Elton's in town. I was most, most disappointed to hear that Susie Elliman is not with us tonight. You know the one with the whole the jazz, the, all that thing? La last year, I thought her dress was, was outstanding. I've never seen quite as much of a human body. <laughs> Why she's not here this evening, I don't know. She's a lovely Tasmanian girl. <laughs> After her appearance last year, she got phone calls from cousins she hasn't slept with in years. <laughs> she... Michelle, if I may have the envelope, please. Thanks for a great weekend too, Michelle. 
Patty doesn't mind. She's very broad-minded. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is terrific to be here. I want to apologise firstly for uh, for last year, a no show. It, um, I think you well know there was a contractual problem in the uh, in the whole thing. It came at a very bad time too. You might recall it was around about that time that the Channel Nine wanted to be back in the uh, in the fold and. Uh, John McAlpine, managing director of the 10 Network, would not speak to me personally. I had to deal with Chopper Reed. Uh, <laughs> I have here the nominees for the Gold Logie. The winner's name is in there. Uh, Patty, I hope you got the mobile message. Get the money on. Uh, <laughs> it's a wonderful combination. And I mean, I just... If you ask me who is going to win, I, I just... Oh my. <laughs> This is actually a true story. This is, I've got two hair pieces. One is called Oscar, because I wore it for the first time on the day of the Oscars. And this one is called, well, it's, it's actually in tribute to your host for this evening. It's called Eddie, <laughs> which is terrific. My thinking was, he's on everything else, why not my head? 